a little bit about your editing philosophy and, and, and how editing a critic might be different than editing other types of journalists? I actually don't think it is any different, so I can't do that. But, uh, well, uh, stand on but, that. Uh, because I think uh, the idea is always to help the writer say what he or she wants to say as well as possible. That usually means that you let them have their own ideas. But if ideas are patently contradictory mm -hmm. or, in some cases, unfactual or just too stupid to abide. Mm -hmm. And in one case, I remember one guy who decided to review the Yellow Magic Orchestra by making all the L's R's and all the R's L's. <laughs> 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 and I told him that this was not acceptable, and he never wrote for me again. Mm -hmm. um, he was, I had him because he was funny, but that wasn't funny, and he thought I was being... People weren't saying politically correct yet, but that was what he meant. Mm -hmm. um, I was right, of course. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, but, no, it has to do with... But then you find every soft adjective... Mm -hmm. Every cliche, if you see a way to say in 12 words what that person has taken 16 to say by reversing clauses or taking out a passive construction or any of the literally dozens of other things that you could ca you know, categorize should you take a, a week to think about it, uh, um, then you do that. Concision, always concision. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and clarity even though some people would read my naughtier sentences and say, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, but I maintain that my sentences are always syntactical, except when they don't want to be and know it. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and almost always clear. And occasionally, I, I see something, I say, I, can, I, can, I, I look at something, I'm reason and I say, what does that mean? It does happen every once in a while. Not often. Mm -hmm. I always know what I mean. Um, and I'm sorry, that matters to me. Because uh, if it's 10 years later, really, I am the objective reader. Mm -hmm. What can you, you know, that this dynamic that you're describing between editor and, and writer um, is something that we've spoken about as, is, is disappearing. The business model is... It's terrible. It's just terrible. I want to say, I mean, the, the voice, when I took over the voice music section in 74, I said, you know, I told you, Diane Fisher published a lot of people I really thought were no good. Mm -hmm. um, three of them, two of whom I won't name, had regular gigs, one weekly and two bi-weekly. And one of them was dull as dishwasher, uh, d dishwater, pardon the cliche, and eventually and, and moved over to the post. One of them still hates me. <laughs> Still hates me to this day. He's a lawyer. Mm -hmm. uh, his prose was impossibly naughty. Uh, uh, it had no vividness or humor to it. it was, the descriptors were usually wrong. And everybody had the clarity and construction problems that I discussed earlier. Uh, and the third um, was named Frank Rose. Mm -hmm. And I said, I will give each of you four shots in over the next 12 weeks. Three times four. No, no guy who's going to the post. No, you're writing. You're not writing every week anymore. You're writing every th third week until we got this sorted out. He actually said, "I'm gone. I'm gone." Mm -hmm. He didn't even bother to try. The other two guys did. Um, and as I said, the lawyer still hates me. Mm -hmm. And Frank Rose, who tried really hard, was working for a magazine called Zoo World. Um, at the end, at the end of the four-week trial period, I'm saying. I said, Frank, I'm sorry you've gotten better, but you're not good enough for this section. Mm -hmm. um, five months later, he called me and said, I have a review I'd like to write for you of the America album. <laughs> America is not a band. <laughs> I was especially eager to cover. Mm -hmm. And I expressed skepticism. He said, please, take a look at this. I said, sure. And I did. And... He had become a different writer, and the America piece was really funny mm -hmm. and great. Mm -hmm. And I ran it. And he says he learned to write in those four sessions. That he, and he became a very well-known 
reporter, mm -hmm. journalist, Frank mm -hmm. Rose. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I taught a lot of people to write. And I continue to do, I do it at NYU to this day. How do you teach people to write? My rule is interrogate every comma. Mm -hmm. Nothing gets by you. Anything that you don't think works, you indicate it. You show them what you want to do, and you work so fucking hard mm -hmm. <laughs> on what you're doing. This is especially true with students that you will shame them into working harder as well. Uh, and uh, you mean by leading by example? Yeah, working working your stuff to death. Right. They could see I was not just making a few marks on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. uh, that I would, they would kind of, you know, the students especially. But it was true. It was true to a lesser extent because they, they were, for the most part, if there were a few exceptions, more skilled mm -hmm. than uh, most students tend to be. Um, the writers are mm -hmm. used, and I would bring writers. I would bring writers in who I just like because I thought they had a, uh, a field of knowledge that I wanted to cover, mm -hmm. or. Uh, um, uh, ideas that I thought were worth exploring. Um, and, or I could see that there was a spark there and there was funny stuff or insightful stuff even though it was a little messy in a lot of respects. Mm -hmm. And I would work with them. And they all got better. What? Everybody got better. 